This is Dr. Tom Rozelle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Rozelle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM WMAL. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, and of course we're live for you, and we're trying to make this the, you know, another piece of the puzzle, if you will, the more intimate information that you need to know moving forward and all the things that you can do to protect yourself and to keep your family safe, but more importantly, to really know the truth about how your body works. What we're talking about today is your immune system, your immunological responses, how that works, and you know what? To do that, I have an expert, and the expert that we're going to be talking to is none other than Dr. Stephanie Pina, who is a naturopathic physician, as well as an acupuncturist, as well as someone who is intimately involved in herbal work. So we're going to take it apart from her perspective. Dr. Pina, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, it's like when I'm not here, you're here. So the, the whole situation is that we're here together. So that that's a double whammy. It works out yeah, pretty well. This- we just have to get used to our new formats, and and then you know we just got got to keep them on with whatever is the most important thing for the week, and and go from there. That's right. Just don't ever use the word the new normal around me because that's not okay. <laughs> no, um, it's not normal. <laughs> no, it's not normal. It's definitely not normal. Listen, uh, I want to get into this because it's so important in today's world. You know, everybody's we're getting into the fall area now, and you know the resurgence of this crazy virus, uh, but. There's other viruses as well, you know, the normal flu, the colds, and so forth. These are all viral patterns. And, of course, in the fall and in the winter, we have more susceptibility to these things. That's where, you know, they're, they're trying to delude people and say, well, we have this resurgence. Well, think about what's happened over the past, that this is the time of the year you have more weakened immunological defense mechanisms for a lot of reasons, and we're going to get into that today. Uh, but... You know, it's important. So let's start simply with laying the format out. Our immune system is our defense mechanism. And let's talk a little bit about how that works. Why is it, you know, why are we setting that aside and and making people feel that, you know, they're susceptible to this regardless? Well, the amazing thing is we have this great immune system that's there really there to protect ourselves. But it also, and the part we forget is that it's involved with the inflammation process that helps us with healing. So it's a double-sided coin as far as us always thinking of boosting the immune system because something's currently going on, an active infection, a viral infection, but we need to boost it just to have normal body functioning as well too. So that cut and scrape, we need to kind of heal up and make sure that it it heals well. That's just as important as worrying about what the next virus is going to bring to us. And the immune system covers so much part of the body. We need the circulatory system. We need the digestive system. We need the lymphatic system. There's so many different parts of it, and it can be complicated, but what we want to do is optimize all those different parts to make sure that we can really optimize our overall health and well-being instead of just focusing on the one-trick uh, pill or one-trick wonder. One-trick pony, huh? So, oh, <laughs> so let, let me, you know, let's do this. Why are some people so sensitive, if you will, so receptive to viral patterns, bacterial patterns, uh, they get sick by walking by somebody who has a problem and other people can, you, you can stand there and talk to them. You could have the most virulent disease in the world and they don't get sick. They're like solid. What's the difference between those kind of people? Because, you know, people are panicking right now. You know, I still see people walking around with nobody around them and they, they're they all masked up and they have gloves on and so forth. What's the difference? I've never masked up. When I'm outside, you won't see me with a mask and I don't get sick. 
Yeah, there's, I think it goes back to when we talk about what makes us healthy to begin with, no matter what topic we talk about, when we talk about the triad of health and the biochemical, structural, dimensional, emotional. And when we talk about that, you know, one person could be doing great and have a great diet and being able to get the nutrients and absorb the nutrients that they're having in, be well hydrated. And those are the people that come in that say, you know, I go to work and I'm the only one in the office that doesn't get sick. The person next to them gets sick over and over and over again. And sometimes we have to look at that as saying, did we ever get well from the first time? Did we get an infection that kind of lingered with us that we were never able to quite get rid of? And then it kind of lingers even longer. And then the body's kind of making us more susceptible. So that way, another cold or flu that we shouldn't have any issues with all of a sudden gets into the system and creates a whole new structure. So I think it's this idea that we are chronically exposed to things and that's a good thing because we want our immune system to be adaptable. We want to be able to get rid of viruses and bacteria and parasites. But essentially at the same time, when we've had too much stress in our lives, there's been other traumas and then we're not eating properly or we don't have the right nutrients going in, our body starts to kind of break down and it's got to give somewhere. So the long-term immune responses start to decrease and so we get sicker over time. That's where we get the the axiom, you know, that a, a child before the year of age need to eat about a, was it a pound or five pounds of dirt, you know, so they can stimulate their immunological responses. And the truth of it is, is that that's how we survive. That's how mankind for eons has survived its environment is that we have those exposures, we build immune reactions, we pass those on genetically, and we become tougher, if you will. But when we cover up and don't build our immune immune responses, life gets progressively more significant. We get in this, you know, uh, later on in the program, I wanna talk to you about this vaccine that's coming up, and I want your opinion on it. Obviously, we all have our positions, our opinions, but it's important to understand what it really is. So as we move forward, you know, and into this uh, winter time, it's important that we repair and re- we build our immune system. I'm gonna ask you some things as, as we move forward, but here's the situation. You know, you have somebody that uh, is not exposed to their environment and they seem to be in a weakened state. Now, you, know, you go out and there's a common cold and they get sick. Uh, we said that there's multiple pieces that uh, that immunological system. What are the things that you would point out to somebody that are the weak links in somebody's lifestyle, their immune systems that are going to make them much more predisposed to, you know, things that are around us and that are out there? Well, and what's interesting too, and I was just thinking before I get to that question is you also have the people that come in and says, I never get sick. And they're like, I haven't been sick since I was five years old. And does that mean they have this great immune system? Possibly, but it also means that they may not be able to actually trigger some of the little factors and the symptoms that we need to show us that something's going wrong. Um, so some of those symptoms are ones that I would look at. Someone who kind of comes in and they're constantly fatigued. Uh, we talk about how sitting is the, is the new smoking. I kind of wonder if fatigue is the new fever and kind of wondering is the person who's chronically fatigued all the time, whether that be from stress or they feel physical fatigue, you know, is that trying to tell us something in the long run because our immune system is always working, we're always trying to deal with stress. Um, The person who's basically on that go and can't get sleep at night, or the person who, you know, doesn't have time to make the foods that they need and actually have time to properly digest them. There's other symptoms that we don't think of, whether it's allergy patterns, um, you know, with the weather changing, you have fall allergies now starting to kick in. People who are sensitive to smells, different kind of pollens, um, different types of foods, you know, there's always an underlying inflammatory reaction that may be going on with them. So it definitely makes them much more sensitive in the long run. And certainly if you already have um, a history of different autoimmune conditions, you have to be careful with those patients, only not only, not only to die, um, to go over that they might be more immune to picking up infectious diseases, but also the fact that the treatments that you give someone has to be a little bit different with someone who has an autoimmune disease. But you have to be more careful with them and kind of wonder, okay, is this normal symptom for someone else kind of showing us uh, something greater going on um, with the person who has autoimmune? You know, there's there's a syndrome called, you know, too sick to be sick. 
Mm-hmm. And exactly what you're talking about. People uh, don't have the immunological responses to have a fever, to get diarrhea, to get the cold sweats. You know, the things, those are our body's normal responses that we try to subdue them. And it's actually a protective mechanism, but they don't have, they're, they're so beat up. And yes, they're tired all the time and they're dragging. And, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I've had patients where we, they come in for treatment and, you know, I tell them, look, this is what's going on and so forth. And about four weeks into treatment, they come in and said, I thought you said this was good for me, and I, I've been sick, you know, for the last, you know, three, four, five days. And I said, it's your body finally kicking in. You're starting to do some house cleaning and really get your immune system back in gear. I said, that's a good thing. My guest in studio, Dr. Stephanie Pina, we're talking about your immune system and what you can do to protect it, and it's really important. We are uh, going to uh, offer this online for you, so all you have to do is call uh, Roselle uh, Center for Healing at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And uh, give them the information and they will send you uh, this podcast uh, so you can get the intimacies of what uh, what you need to do to protect yourself. and Or simply go to Roselle Care online, R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E, RoselleCare.com. Scroll down, you'll see the uh, ad for the presentation, click it, it'll get your information and we'll send you that information. You can watch this in the intimacy of your, uh, your own homes. We're going to try to get back into studio soon, hopefully, and start doing our classes, um, live as we used to do them. And hopefully that won't be too far in the, in the future. Uh, Dr. Pina, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about that too sick to be sick syndrome was kind of, you know, people are, are probably saying, what, what did you say? What's too sick to be who, you know, but the truth of it is, is you start treating somebody and their, their immune responses start coming up. Suddenly they get sick and they were never sick before. And that can be frustrating and weird for patients when they come in, because yeah, like I said, they're coming in here to get well and they're going home going, what the heck happened to me? Like, I, I thought this was supposed to help me, not hurt me. What's going on? I don't want to be here. Uh, and we understand that. But at the same time, it's funny because all of our natural physicians are basically getting excited inside about it too. Um, or someone has symptoms and but their energy level starts to come up, but other of these symptoms come out too. So we see these little changes because the body needs to take in this information and start from scratch, basically, and start to rebuild. So how everyone responds and how their immune system responds can be completely different. So that's why a lot of treatments that we do with patients has to be based off of them individually. It's not just if you have allergy symptoms, let's just dry up those allergens, like the way that the medications work. You have to be able to figure out what's triggering them and what's the underlying things that we're not thinking of. If they've tried everything in the book and nothing's worked, their immune system's probably completely not paying attention to it. So why is that? Is it coming from a different area? You know, we talk a lot about digestive health and the fact that the microbiome in the digestive tract really helps feed into the immune system. Well, that goes into the lymphatic system. And if the lymphatic system can't hear things because we're not drinking enough water, we're not moving around enough, that basically kind of slow down how, how well we can get these pathogens to the, to the immune system to fight to begin with. So in a long time, you have to think outside the box instead of just the symptoms that you have at the time. So when we start to see these things pop up in patients and they get frustrated, it's a good thing because their system's finally going back online. Yeah, it's important that people understand that your body has a natural way of clearing. And when you suppress that ability to get rid of toxins, you're, you're constipated or you're not moving your bowels completely or your lymphatic system is sluggish because you're not drinking enough water and we need water. Well, I drink tea, that's not water. I drink coffee, that's not water. I drink, that's not water. And the body has to do that, you know, to get, you're not getting outside, you're not breathing properly. Your lungs, your kidneys, your colon, your skin surface, uh, you know, those are the way, those are the avenues that your body uses to dump things. And if they're sluggish, you're going to store this stuff. It's going to be toxic as, as all get out. You know, this is an important concept, this immunological response that we have in, in uh, the system. We're, uh, we're coming up to a break uh, in about a short minute. And, but we're going to cover so much as we go through the program today, things that people really need to get their hands around and restore function. Something as simple as knowing that vitamin D has a, a, a purpose in, in body's immunological response. So does vitamin C. It causes interferon production in the cells and goes after antiviral properties. When we come back, I'm going to ask you uh, what's going to happen to all of us if 
vaccines are put on the marketplace. You know, is it something that is good? Is it bad? Should we all run for them? Should we stay away from them? So we watch what we need to do. But we're coming up to uh, a, a short break. Uh, this is a fascinating program, one that we could talk about probably for hours and hours on hand. My guest in studio, Dr. Stephanie Pina, doctor of naturopathic medicine. Great, great presenter. We're going to have some more information for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We have an amazing program. What's that all about? We're talking about your immune system, and I'm talking about that system with Dr. Stephanie Pina, Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine. She will be your presenter this week, and the podcast that uh, we have available can be easily registered, just go online, go to rosellecare.com, R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com, and click fill in the information. We'll send it to you so you can watch it in your own home or simply call 703-698-7117 and tell them to send it to you. And they'll take your information and we'll get it done that way. Dr. Pino, welcome back. Let's uh, let's get into a little bit. We have a short uh uh, segment relative to the program. I want to ask you one direct question. Mm-hmm. I know this, where you're uh, going. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. This vaccine that's coming out that should be out within, you know, the year or not be the end of the year. Should everybody run off and get it? You know, that is a good question. I think you're going to get multiple answers from that. Um, I, you know, I think what's amazing about it is science and technology has certainly allowed us the chance to, you know, reverse engineer how the immune system may work, how viruses work and how to to work with them through a vaccination way, the way we did with smallpox, the way we did with some of the other vaccinations that were very life-saving. Um, I think one of the things to rely on and to think about vaccination with the COVID-19 is the fact that one, where we have to wait so long, we shouldn't have to wait to build our immune system up until the vaccination comes. So we really need to work on ourselves and assume at this point that there isn't one. Um, it, it can't be the saving grace. And so the stuff that the information that's coming out and why you have multiple companies kind of working on multiple vaccinations is sure they all want to be the first one to get the main, the main title for that. But at the same time too, with, you know, different types of medications take a long time to develop. And so when you start putting vaccinations or any drug on the market too quickly, you don't know what the trade-off is going to be. You don't know what the long-term effect is going to be. So in other areas where we talked about the risk behind vaccinations, you know, I think it's something to consider with this one as well too. Um, Just like when they came out with the chickenpox vaccination, you know, there were certain reasons why people would give that because they're afraid of shingles or they were told to take it. But at the same time, we're seeing people fight COVID-19 without the vaccination. We're seeing people recover without the vaccination. If we work on our own immune systems currently, we wouldn't necessarily have to worry about waiting just for that vaccination that nothing says that that's going to be 100% promising either. If it ends up being like the flu vaccine and the flu shot, does it keep having to change every year? So you know, the, the baseline is what doesn't change is our own bodies, our own internal system. So when we look at it, that perspective and how do we boost our immune system without a vaccination, I think we're in a better area and then we're not just sitting at home alone together. Hmm. <laughs> and we have to worry about how am I going to get through not only this flu season, but all the other stuff, never mind COVID vaccine or what vaccinations on the market. So I'm going to put my two cents into it, but this is opinion. We'll make sure that everybody understands this. Dr. Tom <laughs> Rosell's opinion. I have never had, well, I've had one flu shot back when I was 18 years old, back in the day when I didn't know better, and I've had nothing in my body ever since. Now, do I say to everybody, you know, that should be carte blanche across the board? No, you have to. You have to weigh the alternatives back and forth. You really have to know what the situation is. So the true data is that the normal flu shot is about 35 percent some authors would say 37 percent across the board effective that's it on year in and year out basis if you're above 60 it's 12 percent effective so when you take that consideration the the question becomes is there a better way if we're going to go out and get this vaccine because everybody's so horribly afraid of what's coming down the pike with this thing the question becomes have they vetted it enough 
to be able to say you're not going to have some serious side effects. AstraZeneca had to stop their trials, and that was public because they start to see some neurological degenerative changes that were similar to MS. That gets my attention as not only as a physician, but also as a human and saying, you know what, I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to let anybody else who has the courage to go out and do this be the guinea pigs before I take it. But I'm going to wait and see. So I'm not telling people not to do it. I'm just saying, look at the data, look at the evidence, find out if it really is effective before you make that decision moving forward. And it only can be uh, come from a place of knowledge. We're coming up to the, the bottom of the, uh, the, the bottom of the hour, and we need to uh, really discuss a lot more about immunological responses as we go forth in the program. But all I want to say to people is that don't be a lemming. Don't do it just because somebody's telling you to do it because the effectiveness rate may not be what it's purported to, to be. You know, say, well, we've got this you know, vaccine. It's going to be very effective. Uh, you know, somebody is behind the scenes with an agenda. Find out what the agenda is. Make the decision based on true uh, information and not just what the talking heads are telling you on the radio or the television. We're coming up to break. My guest in studio, Dr. Stephanie Pina, doctor of naturopathic medicine. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We're bringing you some fascinating information today, something that is important for all of us, particularly in this crazy world that we're living in and have been for the last uh, nine months or so. And what we're talking about is your immunological system, how you stay healthy, how you stay strong without, you know, look into drugs and vaccines and things of that nature. What's more important, starting with a base that really is resistant or having to limp and, and fall apart and then going out to get something that is secondary to that. My guest today, Dr. Stephanie Pina, doctor of naturopathic medicine, acupuncturist, and one who's intimately familiar with uh, herbal preparations and homeopathic preparations and proud to say part of my team at the Result Center for Healing. Dr. Pina, welcome back and let's uh, move forward and give people more data. Let's take this immune system apart again and talk a little bit about, you know, what people can uh, can look at relative to judging their own immunological responses, meaning, you know, do they, is there a checklist? You know, I, I have this, I have this, I have this, and oh my God, I'm not doing well. Or I have this, I have this, I have this, and my system is solid and I can really depend on it. Well, it's interesting because, you know, I look at what the immune system are, and, and when it kind of fights different types of inflammation, or even if we go back to like allergies, you know, those are typical immune responses that we can kind of observe ourselves. So we don't have to necessarily wonder, you know, do I have a fever right now, even though everybody's checking everybody for fever. So they're, you're getting your fever checked more than you ever did in the past. Right, as um, you do in the office, everybody walks in. Absolutely. And we're, we've got enough hand washing to know that, you know, if you've got any cuts or abrasions or anything that's open, you, you've seen mm -hmm. that if it's on your hands as well, too. But fever, um, fatigue, like we said before, that kind of consistently doesn't go away. Even digestive issues, you know, alternating loose stools, diarrhea, constipation. Um, if, if the bowels aren't able to work well, we can't get things out of the body the way we need to. And if the body is trying to create an immune response, um, like almost loose stool to get things out because maybe there's a pathogen or bug that's got in there. You know, if we're not able to go to the bathroom, we have to, we've just eliminated one of the tracks that is our basic barrier. Um, increased mucus production. You know, when we, we notice that allergy season starts to kind of kick in, we start to get more nasal congestion. Um, some people get affected more so by the weather changes or the barometric pressures. You know, that has to do with that mucus production that we hold within the body as well, too. So that can be part of it. Or knowing swelling. Um, joint pain as well, too. Unexpected joint pain. That can be part of the things because of essentially some of the same factors that go to the joints um, in different types of uh, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, osteoarthritis can also, it's playing on our inflammation factors and that in itself starts to trigger up the immune system. So anytime you see things where, 
you know, something doesn't feel right. It's not going away. It can be very vague. You know, I mean, some people come in, they're just like, I just don't feel right. And, and, you know, and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm feeling well. You don't have to come in with symptoms to start working on your immune system. That's the main thing. Prevention is actually a better key. And in Chinese medicine, they used to boost the immune system a couple of seasons ahead of time. So they wanted to strengthen and support the body enough so you weren't playing catch up and waiting for the symptoms to come in. But when they do come in, you have to treat them at that stage. And that's the way we think about whether it's COVID or other bacterial or viral diseases is treating things at the stage they are and what's most appropriate. Because sometimes going overboard with the treatment isn't going to be more helpful. It may actually cause more injury. Now, it's, an, it's important for people to understand that uh, how they feel uh, in a state of health and how they feel in a state of immunological suppression uh, is very distinct. And if you really pay attention to your body, you can tell the difference. You know, if you're feeling sluggish all the time, if your joint space is hurt, as you talked about, and you talked a little bit about rheumatoid arthritis, but in today's world, with all the ticks that are out there and so forth, and the, the Lyme patterns and the Bartonella and the Ehrlichia, the, the co-infections of Lyme, they go to the joint spaces as well. They can go to the intestinal tract. They can go to organ systems and, and cause problems. But if you don't have a bowel movement or you go two, three days like some people do, your immune system is suffering. Your body's uh, system is toxic at that point and is struggling to get rid of that. If you don't sweat easily, you know, when you sneeze, if you hold your breath uh, and, uh, you know, not express that sneeze, you're allowing all that stuff to stay inside of you. And, you know, we're, we're putting masks on. You, you're sneezing, you know, through the mask. But guess what? You're not getting rid of all those particles. Those things are going back inside of you, and you're actually increasing your risk of other disease processes and bacteria. And God forbid, you know, uh, any of the viral patterns that you have inside are being recirculated back in because of that. We're, people aren't, aren't aware of it because you're not being told of that. But you have to have you know, the ability to sweat. You know, one of the things I'll tell patients, if you want to find out how good or bad your system is, your body shouldn't smell badly. So go 24 to 36 hours uh, without taking a shower. And you're at home, obviously, you know, so I'm not going to go out if I haven't taken a shower. Well, that's a nice thing. But if you want to find out if your body's dumping things, then before you wash, before you do anything, take your nose and put it in your elbow crease, right where you bend your arm and smell it. If that smells rancid, the chances are your body is toxic. It shouldn't, it, I mean, it's not going to smell clean and fresh like springtime, but it shouldn't smell rancid and it shouldn't smell like mold or fungus. If it does, it tells you you've got a problem that's going on. So those are the things that we can do easily, but there's other patterns as well. What else, you know, uh, can we encourage our, our audience to do? You know, one of the interesting things is, you know, sometimes you just know when you don't feel right. You know, you have to kind of use a little bit of that gut instinct as well, too. And, and when you've been kind of too tired for too long, you know, we also have to make sure we build in things like stress release as well, too, because right now our, our new normal <laughs> that we talked about that doesn't exist, you know, we're in different positions. We're doing different things. I can't tell you how many teachers are coming into the office right now, and we have to not only help them get through their stressful situations, but they're behind computers all day long, or they're dealing with stressors that they weren't prepared to deal with. So everyone kind of has these new stressors in their life that they're dealing with, and it's going to affect them in a lot of different ways. And the immune system starts to say, okay, I'll, I'll take the back seat for this now. So as we get closer to winter, when we're inside more and our vitamin D levels aren't as much, and we're not getting as much fresh air and walking, you know, now our, our systems become more and more susceptible to, to trying to tell us that there's something wrong. So I definitely allow patients to kind of come in with their gut instinct. And from an observation standpoint, sometimes we see it, uh, patients feel fine, but we see, you know, the shine in their eyes isn't the same. They're not walking just right. Um, they're a little bit more sluggish in their speech patterns. Um, there's a lot of little things that you look at, and that's where some of the techniques that were in Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, where they really had to observe the person we utilize in the office now and we utilize in functional medicine are great because we're not relying on a positive test result to treat the patient. We're not relying always on x-rays and images to start to, to help the healing process. So your immune system is something that's constantly under attack, but essentially it may not always show these signs. So sometimes it's, it's the people around you or the practitioners that you trust that you go to see that can kind of pick up on, on things that are really going wrong. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's incredible that we're we're a highly supposedly educated society, but we're only educated in a funnel. And I'm going to use that purposely because there's so much information that's out there, but we're being directed by a lot of talking heads relative to immunological uh, support systems. What I mean by that is simply this. Listen to the television. Listen to the radio. Where else on the planet do they advertise for drugs? Where else on the planet do they advertise for vaccines? Except here in the good old United States. And it's called, you know, uh, big marketing and pharma and so forth. And so what they're doing is there's, they have an agenda. Take this preventatively. For years it was, you know, you're going to take a daily aspirin above age 50 because you want to prevent heart attacks. The problem was that the side effect was bleeding, intestinal tract bleeding and uh, anemic conditions and other uh, joint spaces that were going to suddenly start degenerating. People didn't realize that. And so we start seeing the aftermath of wrong immunological response. But here's a situation that we have to support our bodies. Back in, in the Spanish flu era, 1918, my grandmother uh, in Sicily died of uh, the Spanish flu. But what they, you know, uh, what they finally recently brought out was that the people that were treated outside, meaning there were so many people that were coming down with this thing, that were outside receiving sunlight didn't have the morbidity rate as the people who are inside. And that goes to our good old vitamin D levels and the old fasting sanatoriums and the healing sanatoriums of Europe, uh, you know, the naturopaths of Priester and Kellogg and so forth way back in the day. That's why they did it outside in the mountaintops where direct sunlight was there because they knew the effect of the sun on healing, which is the simulation of vitamin D. There's other things as well, but that's the primary consideration. So we see patients that come in that are basically in a cubicle, meaning inside their houses, they're in a cocoon, they're not going out, they're not walking, they're not getting fresh air. When they go outside, they're masked up, they're gloved up, they're in their cars, the windows are rolling up, they're killing themselves. It's crazy. So what's interesting when you bring up the vitamin D is one of the things that also came up about the 1918 flu is, you know, you also had this time where people were moving from an agrarian society and being outside more to the cities. So now you had more issues of being not only indoors, but your food was going to be different. Your the inside outside the light source is going to be different. So some of these same factors that we learned from different um, past viral infections, epidemic infections um, throughout history are giving us great information about what we should be doing now. But sometimes it seems so basic and simple and it couldn't possibly affect us. So, you know, that was 18, 1918. You know, it's a whole different situation. Well, we're the same chemical bodies that we were back then. So why would we not need some of the same inform the same stuff? Um, so it's it's very interesting. And, and I had to go back and look at some of the viral infections that, you know, that we don't talk about that weren't that long ago. When we look at how did things like Ebola all of a sudden come in and go away so quickly? How did SARS happen? You know, we compare that to what's going on with COVID, but some of the treatments that they were doing then were basic treatments that just boosted the immune system. They never came up with vaccinations for either one of those. So it, it makes us kind of think about, you know, what's the best way to support the body is just giving it what it needs. And so if we need help figuring that out, we can use modern technology like different types of lab testing. We can test for vitamin D levels. We can look to see if iron levels are normal. Um, we can look at certain things from a different perspective and make sure they're in an optimal range versus just on each end of the border to before we have to wait to treat them. You know, it's important that people become critical in, in how they filter information, that they ask questions properly, that they don't, don't sit there and accept what's being put out. You know, take as much data as you possibly can. As we always said, question everything, including the information that we give you, but do it from a basis of multi, multiple points of view and not just accept what somebody is saying simply because they're saying it. Oh my God, it's on internet, it's on Google. You know, Dr. Google is probably the, the most sought after information in the world, but un unfortunately the most erroneous and, and full of holes and, and uh, aberration. Uh, Dr. Pina is gonna be presenting a podcast that you can have available to you on this subject coming up this week. All you need to do is call Result Care uh, at seven, uh, 703-698-7117 and ask to have that sent to you or simply go online at rosellecare.com and register for it and we'll send it to you and share it. We're, you know, none of the, uh, all the information that we 
put out is there for you and for anybody else that would like to do it. Dr. Pina, let's, we got a few minutes before the, uh, this segment's up. I want to walk you through how you actually evaluate a person's immunological system. If they came in and said, Dr. Pina, I want to be stronger. I want to be better. I don't want to have, you know, to deal with this thing. I don't want to get sick. What can they do proactively? How do you look at that case? Well, you can never go wrong with taking a good history first. And the good thing is, as most of the patients that know that come in, and even when people call in, they know that they're spending a lot more time with us in the office than they normally do at the other offices because we need to find that information out. And sometimes what seems the least relevant to us um, when you first come in is really, really important, whether you're looking at it from a chiropractic and acupuncture and nutrition standpoint. We want to really know how you've dealt with things in the past. What are you experiencing now? But what have you done in the past when these things have happened? Have you had other chronic conditions that have not healed? Do you have mild low-grade fever or trouble sleeping or digestive tracts? So you get homework to basically help us figure out this stuff. But then what have you done with your regular doctors too? We can, we can examine current blood work to see if there looks like there's underlying infections. When we look at white blood cell numbers, we know that certain white blood cells are more indicative of bacterial infections or longer viral infections or even parasites and allergies. Um, if we need to do additional testing to look to see how your stress response is, we can do that. From a Chinese medicine perspective, I always tell patients, you know, we're looking at the tongue and we're, we're feeling the pulses. And there's a lot of times with pulses, you can basically you know, tell something's, something's wrong. Something's kind of funny with your pulse here. There's, are you starting to kind of come down with something? And those fever and chills and, and, um, you know, body aches that we get at the very beginning of when we come down with an infection, that's, that's the first signs of stuff. We don't always have to see that, but people aren't always aware of it. So we want to basically get a good history and work with what we already have. You know, it's important that we take the layers off one at a time. And as you said, patient comes in. One of the things that we do, and we're coming up to a break, but I want to uh, people understand this, is that we're looking at vitamin, we're looking at zinc levels, we're looking at uh, deviations and in, in stress patterns through postural blood pressures, we're looking at energetic platforms through the acupuncture system and so forth. You have to know exactly what the status is immunologically across the board with that patient, with you, before anything else is taking place. It's not a matter of putting the symptoms out. If you put the symptoms out, you suppress the body's ability to express that symptom, you make life even worse than what it was when the patient walked in. We're coming up to a break. My guest is Dr. Stephanie Pina, doctor of naturopathic medicine. We're talking about your immune system. Don't go away. We're going to come back and wrap it up with some very interesting information. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on WMAL. Welcome back. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live as you do every Sunday at 11 a.m. on the Eastern Seaboard. Thank you for listening and thank you for letting other people know that we're here. And so many of you are listening in the armed forces. Don't know how you find us, but, you know, thank you for your service. We appreciate you and, you know, we're here to help you. Any information that you need, we'll get to you as quickly as we possibly can. My guest in studio, Dr. Stephanie Pita, and we're talking about your immune response and how to protect yourself going forward, which is a critical piece of the puzzle today, particularly in the world that we're living in. Dr. Stephanie, uh, people are going to have the opportunity to listen to a podcast that uh, that you're putting together, and it's available this week, all they have to do is go to RoselleCare.com and send us the information or call the office at 703-698-7117. Uh, they can also send questions to you through uh, the office email. So just, you know, send it directly to her and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that we get back to you right away. And for some reason, if we ever, if you ever send an email and something happens, there's glitches in technology, call the office and let us know and we will get back to you personally by phone. Dr. Pina, what can people expect when they get this podcast? What, what are, how are they going to be able to apply it to their lives? What can they do for themselves? Well, first with anything, if we have a base knowledge, we know where to, to go from there. So we're going to cover some of the basis on immune system function, physiology. So, you know, if you're hearing some of these terms, whether it's on the news media or the when we talk about them, you have a base idea of what we might be looking for. We don't have to give you a a degree in immunology, but essentially what we want to do is make sure you're familiar with what the conversation, the terminologies are. 
And from there, we're also going to cover some of the myths and I'd say misunderstandings about treating the immune system naturally, because there's there's a lot of information out there also in treating uh, the immune system and boosting it from a natural way. But it's not always what it seems. Where do things go right? Where do go, things go wrong? When we talk about certain herbs that you shouldn't use to boost the immune system and then they're, they're popular herbs, where does that come into play? And then we're going to talk about how pulling things together, the information that you already have, like lab work, the information you have, other diagnosis and core mobilities. How do we treat your immune system by also treating the rest of the body? Because what we've seen over the last, say, three or four months since, I guess, March, is that the people that have been able to keep their immune system boosted is the ones that are basically still coming in for their regular treatments that are still working on heart disease and the high blood pressure and diabetes and all the things that can potentially be affected also by this virus. So we're gonna try to pull everything together so we know where we stand now from the immune system, how do we boost it properly? And then what do we do come the future months as well too that gives us things that we can do practically at home. But then when do we talk to somebody and say, okay, I need a little extra help. I have these questions, where do I go? And hopefully that's what this webinar tends to pull together is at least gets us thinking and I, like you mentioned about asking questions too, you know, unfortunately we're not able to do these in person yet, but that's where a lot of questions get asked and we really dive deep into what people are thinking of when they're when we're in person. So emailing and calling into the office is gonna be a great way to also contact us and get the answers that you're particularly looking for as well. So if we don't cover it, ask us to cover it. <laughs> <laughs> anything that we can do to help, anything that we can do to give you the information that you need to run your lives from a place of knowledge, but also a place of certainty and not fear. That's that's why we do the program. That's why we you know, we try to pick it apart for you in a way that it's understandable, that it's applicable, the things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis, because it's an ongoing process. It's just not about COVID. It's not about the normal flu. It's about your life, and it's about all the things that – are necessary for you to protect yourself moving forward. You know, I have the pleasure of working with uh, amazing people like Dr. Pina and our staff at the Result Center for Healing on a day-to-day -day basis, and they have tremendous capacity and ability, and we spend the time, we do what's necessary, we give people the information that they need to have, both from an application point of view, but from a knowledge base, and, and that's why we're here. And that's why we do the, this program every Sunday at 11 a.m. on the Eastern Seaboard. And we continue to do it for one very specific reason and none other, because we love you all. See you next week. Take care. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com.